Welcome back folks. Today I am going to make a start on fabricating a custom sump guard for the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. Doing it probably a little bit unexpectedly. Um, I'm going to use this sheet of plastic effectively. It's a uh, high density polyethylene if I've got that correctly. Um, reason why uh, is it's letting a noisy tractor come past. The reason why is previously I've had a plastic skid plate um, on a CRF. I had a AXP and that was very good. Um, they absorb the shock well if you do hit anything and basically the idea is I am making this to be used it may well get hit um, and so I'm going to make it as strong as I can and I want it to absorb the shocks they'll gouge and stuff if you scrape them over rocks but um, they, they will take a lot more pain than what you might think they do and um, they also don't send the noise up from the engine the same that uh, aluminium or metal uh, skid plate does and they also slide over stuff relatively nicely um, Adventure Spec make some uh, skid plates, I think, for the CRF 450. They've got maybe the and the Tenere as well. They've got some aluminium skid plates, but they also fit them with some plastic rub, rub strips for sliding over stuff. It just it helps in that regard. It's not like I'm going to be doing trials on it or anything, but um, that's what I'm going for. Just uh, I like main things absorbs the noise. It'll blend in being black easy to work with um, and is strong I may end up bonding it to some metal to make it a bit more rigid because as you can see it's a little bit floppy um, I'll be doing it in a traditional style so just a, a flat plate with an upturn this will need cutting down so that's the first thing I'm going to do measure up the bike and then cut this to size and today maybe bend it as well bear with me if it's a long one it's going to be quite a bit of fabricating involved in uh, fabricating the brackets to mount this so stay tuned if you're interested in this and how it turns out so the last major thing i need to do before taking it off-road properly because obviously you don't want to be taking it off-road with no bash plate and smashing your sump off or your oil filter or whatever so excited to get this done and then I can uh, see what it's like off-road so I want it to cover the rails and um, so as wide as the frame basically a bit bit wider than the frame but obviously don't want it to be wide enough to touch the exhaust it probably only need to be a total of about 600 long however I'm thinking I might leave it more like 750 it gives me the option to bring it up further that would mean creating two mounting points my idea is uh, to make a bracket coming off where these mount um, and I'll have to put a different spacer in put a bracket across here that bolts in here to screw it on here and then if I do take it up further I'll have to do the same again and, and come off of these mounts up here and um, whether I do that's to be confirmed but it's looking like I'll need that to be 750 long by 220 wide initially and then I may shape it in at the front but I'll keep it at those di those dimensions until I've uh, created the bend that I need here.
so I'll use this to mark where I want my cut it's approximately that I'm not being completely accurate because there's a will be a little bit of leeway in it I'll just mark that up at either side then I can decide where I'm going to run my saw in from quick tip for using a circular saw got to be a bit steady to clamp that there it's a good quick way of cutting a narrow piece of timber or whatever I'll just uh, shorten the blade so it's a bit safer less prone to nipping as well if you just make it run a bit longer than your workpiece yep happy with that here goes nothing saying that better check that that's very square in case off on the edge I'll pull off like that so now we've cut that to the something like final length we then want to use the template to measure roughly where we are going to bend it there is a little bit of leeway in all this um, depending on your preference as long as you make it so that you have a bit of leeway so we're looking something like so I'll mark that across using this lovely lippy kiss proof left most of it on my square <clears throat> lipstick on your square boy tells a tale on you right see how we get on with this I think I could do with holding that square on the pipe because it's going to walk around a bit so I'll use this big chunk of steel I've got and make sure it's something like and we'll leave that there so now when I bend it it can't really go anywhere see if my square just helps me I that up looks about right here we go quite sure what to do with this might even put a bit of peat under there that'd be an idea since it's copper tube it will help it conduct just to uh, help it form on the inside edge don't want to get in too hot and melting itself on it though as I say this is going to be the outside edge I want it bending like that so one would think I need to heat the outside more than the inside it's a longer distance I may be wrong we'll go with that starting to sweat on the outside edges don't know if you can see that on camera 
little bit. I'll try and do that as even as I can. I don't know if you'll be able to see this on the finished article. Try and supplying a bit of pressure. Good thing with this final part, when it does bend, it's got more weight to it, so it should stay in position a bit better. I think that will be something like, like I say, it can uh, always stretch back out a bit, so I'll probably bend it and keep it in that kind of position and let it cool off. So I need to just trap this here with something. think if I just tie that off will hopefully work for me so we'll leave it at that point for now I need to order some uh, extra fixings and stuff for the next stage and I'll be back soon mm -hmm.